Well, good morning, everybody. Saturday, August 25th, 2012. And I had to get some sleep last night. Thought I would get up this morning and read a little bit more from Genesis. I believe we're at chapter 47, verse 11. We'll check that here in a second. And uh, I've also pulled up an associate of Alberto Rivera. And we'll be listen to a few segments from him his name is Bishop Gerard Buffard uh, originally from Canada I believe and he originally speaks French but his English is pretty good here you can see the uh, representatives of the Vatican given the Roman salute which most people in today's world associate with Hitler and the Nazis because they use this but if you think about it they're the third Reich the third reign of the Pope as the master on earth that's their whole goal so if you're not aware of it I'm sure a lot of people are but then there's plenty that are not probably more that are not aware of this so far than that are so let's get the word out. These people here are raising their arm in a Roman salute to the Reich. And since the Third Reich didn't make it, you can only guess and expect that they are planning and have been planning since the end of World War II to initiate another world war and create a Fourth Reich and let that lead them to their ultimate goal of reinstating the Pope as the head ruler on earth and of course he's a direct representative of Satan Lucifer I guess there may be a lot of other names for the the darkness they represent but evil is another summary and let's listen to a little bit of Gerard He's explaining some of his background. This is the first interview I've heard, and uh, Eric Phelps is interviewing him, who does uh, VaticanAssassins.org. So let's let's hear a little bit, and then we'll read some from Genesis. And I was vice president of the Council of the Bishop in Latin America. That's why I had to go to Rome and, uh, and travel with the Pope in Mexico for the conference uh, with the Bishop of Latin America. And what languages uh, were you fluent in at that time? In that time, I, I, when I went to Guatemala, I was speaking Spanish because I was 14 years and I had to learn the, to, to learn the, the language of, of the people, but I had to learn nine different languages in my life. Hmm. Uh, and so, uh, English, French, Spanish, uh, uh, Creole, uh, Korean, Vietnamese, and that's <laughs> a lot of language I don't use so much now because I don't know. Before I had uh, like a hundred uh, person I had to wrote every every month, but now you know I speak uh, very, I speak English, I speak Spanish, I speak Creole, and I speak French too, and. Uh, when I was missionary in Africa, I have to learn the five different languages there too. Well, language has a lot to do with this. We're going to read in English what used to be published only in Hebrew. And, uh, I'm sorry, my mind just slipped away there. Hebrew and what was the other language they published it in? Aramaic. Well, it'll come to me. I know it. I can't think of it right now. <clears throat> in any case, it was not in English, and they didn't want anybody in English speaking cultures, mostly peasants, the impoverished slaves of the elite, as they're called today. They weren't allowed to read this stuff, so let's read some. Tyndale, Genesis chapter 47, verse 11. For so with Joseph, yet to his father and brethren possession in Egypt I'm going to see if I can highlight this in Ramesses 
and the best soil, the best soil of earth, as Pharaoh commanded. Yeah, Ramesses, I think, is up between uh, or up near the um, seas where the Nile meets the ocean. It's one of those fertile grounds, as far as I know, where uh, the alluvial soils deposit over time, and then it's very well watered, great sunlight, and very rich earth. So the best soil of earth. Let's read uh, King James. And Joseph placed his father and his brethren and gave them a possession in the land of Egypt, in the best of the land, in the land of Ramesses. Is it Ramses or Ramesses? Here we got two S's. Ram, Ramesses. Ramesses? Ram, Ramses. Ramses. I'm not sure. As Pharaoh had commanded. Twelve. And he fed him, fed them, and all the house of his father, and gave meats to all, and gave meats to all. I think meats can be taken to be food, nourishment. I'm still thinking that's true. Unless we see evidence to the contrary, we'll take that to be what it means. Chapter 12, King, or verse 12, King James. I've said that before. I say chapter, but I mean verse. So, sorry when I do that. Uh, verse 12. And Joseph nourished his father and his brethren and all his father's household with bread according to their families. Okay. And verse 13. <coughs> in Tyndale. For bread followed in all the world and hunger oppressed the land most of Egypt and of Canaan. I'm going to uh, pause here. I got to take a quick break and we'll get going and do uh, chapter four or verse 14, chapter 47 of Genesis uh, in just just a sec. Let's catch that fire. It's got a nice spark coming off of it and some green glowing parts. Pretty nice fire that one was. Good camping trip. All right. See you next video.